Okay, it's gonna get loud. No! Get those words! go guys that's your wake up call it's time for the bid nerd your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on all the automotive enthusiast auction sites i'm john polnick your host along with normally it's michael d but instead today we've got that guy i mean look at that we brought an expert to replace michael d michael d wanted to go on vacation we thought we'd go ahead and fire him and uh let someone over uh come, come someone else come and take over his job and we will see how that goes lane skelton from Rad for Sale, Rad Wood, and my favorite automotive, uh, I guess it would be automotive podcast, right? Yeah. Driving Well Awesome. How you doing, Lane? Yeah. What's up, man? Good. How about you, John? Oh, man. Uh, we are having technical issues abound. You know, doing mm-hmm. the show, Michael Deeb and I make it look easy to be idiots. Um, but here, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to be uh, an idiot without my normal um, host, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to lean on you. Lane. Yeah, we're gonna miss him and his. We're gonna miss him and his uh, new vacation hat. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> is that a thing now? What? Are, I mean, yeah, it's vacation deep, dude. It's just like vacation deep doesn't. He, he's unpredictable. He's uh, you know, he's a wild card. I mean, it, he's kind of like the Indiana Jones of Michael Deeb right now. He's got his fedora. Um, yeah, that or, he, or he's the bad guy in Raiders of the Lost Ark. What was his name? Belloc or something? Oh, yeah, yeah. He had the, you know, he had the hat in Egypt and everything like that. I don't mm-hmm. know he's going for that. Um, all right. Well, we're not here to talk about old 80s movies. Uh, we are here to talk about cars. What we do on the show, if you're just joining us, we pick the most interesting cars from all the automotive auction sites like Rad for Sale, uh, P Car Market, Bring a Trailer, and of course, Cars and Bids. Um, there's so many cars for sale every single day that we try to sift through them and find you the most interesting stuff. And there's some really interesting cars today. Um, we always start the show by going over the fun part, what we do when we nerd out on these cars, then we make predictions to what we think these cars will sell for. Every car that we talk about today are cars that are going to close today. Their auctions will end today. Um, that is, of course, uh, the exception is uh, when we go ahead and talk about the cars from yesterday. So I'm going to do that real quick. And I'm going to go over our bids from yesterday and see how Michael Deeb and I did. Now, you guys are going to have to hang, uh, bear with me just a little bit because things are a little different here. If uh, For those of you who watch the show, usually you know that Deeb introduces the cars and then I do the back end stuff and then make jokes that aren't funny. Um, and then we just kind of move on. But, uh, so today I'm going to be trying to do a bunch of the same stuff at the same time. Um, so yesterday we talked about this amazing 1989 Porsche 911 speedster. This wasn't your run of the mill speedster. If there is such a thing, this was a, this was not a paint to sample car. This was a car that someone took a 911, uh, you know, G body speedster, uh, and, you know, which came with an M491 wide body kit. Uh, this car, they stripped it down to the bare metal. I think this car started out as red and they stripped this thing down and painted it uh, a yellow color. I think it was one of the Ferrari yellow colors, like a fly yellow or some other yellow like that. And not only did they strip it down and change the color, but they also swapped out the engine with a 930 turbo engine, which of course required that big T tray wing on the back to account for it, you know, to make room for the intercooler that sits on top of a 930 engine. So this speedster, you know, you see it and it, it, it's a beautiful speedster. It looks like, okay, this could be a factory car. Somebody put a wing on it, but it's got a lot more bite uh, going on back there. And uh, Lane Skelton, what do you think of these cars? Oh man, that's a trick question. I think. Yeah, I know, um, right? Because I'm asking you, what do you think of uh, speedsters? But what do you think of this particular? Speedster? I know, right? Uh, I don't know. Speedsters are they're kind of cool. In period, I wasn't like the hugest fan, but yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think they're rad. And um, adding yeah. a turbo is pretty pretty sweet. But I don't <laughs> know aesthetically, the turbo the tail doesn't do much for me aesthetically. But I understand the need for it. Right. And yeah, that, I mean, that's actually what I said yesterday too. It's like, yeah, I don't like the look of having that big 
doopy wing on the back. Yeah. I think the speedsters. I, I personally, uh, and it, I'm you know I make no bones about it. I am a convertible uh, Porsche 911 fan. Uh, I own yeah. one, not a speedster, but uh, I love having the roof off. And there's something about the speedster having that short windshield. Um, I always describe it. It's kind of like changing the world into an amusement park ride because when you're in a normal convertible, you've got that big full size screen or you know windshield, and it, you know it, it's definitely different than a coupe. <clears throat> but having that windshield still makes it feel like you're in a car but something about mm-hmm. having that windshield only be this tall it just yeah you know there's so much more sensory going on <laughs> and those cars really were light they really were an rs car uh you know they had roll-up windows instead of the power windows like all the other ones of the era i mean they just were they were they just drive so wonderfully i've, I've luckily had the uh, opportunity to drive many of them fairly recently and it just reminds me oh, cool. i really want one um but this one with yeah. the turbo has got to be just nutty um yeah you know scary car to flip over well anyways michael d bid this car at one hundred forty-five thousand dollars. that's where he thought he it would land what do you where, do you know how much this one went for i have no idea Okay, well, I bid 140 because I thought the color uh, would hurt it, uh, and uh, I was a little I was a little bearish on the holiday. This is the first car we talked about yesterday, and I wasn't quite sure how Memorial Day would affect prices. We've seen BAT now offering cars for sale um, on the weekends, which was kind of a big experiment for them, uh, and that has gone very very well. Um, cars continue to sell there, and the prices have not doesn't seem like they dip at all. In fact, that somebody some people could make an argument that they sell better on the weekends now um mm-hmm. so the holiday i was thinking man everyone's going to be out barbecuing and doing whatever uh and that just wasn't the case so i bid the under at one hundred forty thousand dollars, and that car went up to a whopping one hundred seventy one thousand six seven seven. so that's a weird wow. bid uh but yeah that thing just kept climbing and climbing and climbing so a non-original car uh with a different engine still b- uh, broke 150 grand uh yeah. and that was uh, so that was for michael deeb's big that's win crazy there, right isn't that just nuts man i don't even wow yeah uh, and you know talk about bonkers that's this, so crazy. That? right uh that's, it's nuts i mean but but a part of it is like you were talking about the experience of a speedster mm-hmm. and we always talk about on our podcast it's sense of occasion mm. and like a convertible adds to your the sense of occasion of a car so like going to the liquor store in a convertible is like way more exciting than going to the liquor store in a coupe and then adding that window and everything it's like that's an experience you can't replicate with i don't know any modern car really it's true even a new speedster uh the brand new yeah. 991.2 speedster is a great looking car but that windshield is i mean they have to follow crash you know i mean there's no way uh porsche could ever release the old speedster you know the old 911 speedster because there's no, no way that no. would pass any kind of crash test stuff uh, uh i mean they, yeah. they would oh my gosh right um yeah I mean, Porsche can. They do have all the die sets. They do have the capability of reproducing pretty much any car uh, that they ever made on an assembly line. So they can't really repro- reproduce the 356s because those were all hand-built. But pretty much every G-body car, and even, what am I saying, G-body, all the long hood cars, all the cars that were built on an assembly line, all those cars, they could they could make a brand spanking new one right now. They have the stuff for it. But you know they and in fact they did right they brought out that 993 turbo uh yeah. for ren sport uh, a few it years wasn't back. street register re- register you could though. not it register like a, it that was yeah. a thing it, w- it went for what yeah. three four hundred thousand dollars or something like that and, yeah uh, it was you couldn't even pretty absurd yeah yeah for then although what well, yeah what do you think that car's i know now, now I don't, yeah that's what's crazy at the time you're like this thing's stupid like why would anyone buy this right and, um i i personally i hated the color too but yeah. Uh, I didn't like the look with the black wheels and stuff. It just wasn't, it wasn't my style. Yeah. Um, I feel like they kind of missed the boat. Uh, they should have done arena red or something. Right. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you're right. That would be a million dollar car now, probably. Probably. Um, so whoever uh, whoever bought that, they are probably laughing all the way back. All right. Uh, yeah. Another car that we another Porsche that we talked about was this 1982 911 SC. Uh, this had fairly low miles. I think it had something like 60,000 miles. I'm going from memory here because I don't have the uh, information up. Um, but this car was in kind of an, uh, a different color. It was this kind of rare blue. It wasn't a paint to sample car, uh, but this it had the blue with the uh, kind of tan two tone tan and brown interior. The car looked uh, appeared to be by all accounts in excellent shape uh from your friends more motors right you oh know those more guys? more imports yeah yeah, yeah. more imports sorry even control 
Yeah, I mean, uh, some great photos. How often do we talk about that? Photos really, really sell a car. Uh, and this is beautiful to see it, you know, on the beach with the water in the background. And, you know, I mean, the colorway really just kind of blends into this wonderful uh, background. Uh, what do you think of 911 SCs? I mean, it's kind of like the, it used to be the basic bitch of 911s, but now yeah. uh, they're the bell of the ball. What do you think? I mean, they've always been the, like, go-to for, like, here's the most reliable 911 you could buy with a, tensioner upgrade and you know a couple a pop-off valve essentially yep. was always the recipe mm-hmm. and then you have this like bulletproof car personally i like driving scs you'll probably hate you probably will disagree but i like driving them more than carreras so i like the three liter more than the three two i feel like the engine it's a revier a rev happier engine mm-hmm. um, where the three two is more of a torquey engine and i just feel like it's a more fun experience to like rev mm-hmm. through you know, go through the rev range of a three liter than a 3.2. I think it's more, it feels a little more motorsports to me. Um, and I, I love, I like them a lot. And they're, they're, you know, if you get like a 78 or something, they're pretty light um, compared to a, like a G50 Carrera is a pretty heavy car in comparison. Yeah. Yeah, no, I won't disagree with you at all. Actually, I, I agree a hundred percent. In fact, I even like the I like the mid year nine eleven G bodies. I love the two point seven. That's my two point sevens are rad. Yeah. yeah, they just they they may not be as fast, but they feel faster. And so that sense mm-hmm. of occasion that you're talking about, just going down to the grocery store or getting a cup of coffee or something like that, you feel like you're having fun. Um, and yeah. they did add a lot of weight in the insulation and sound deadening and all kinds of stupid stuff in Carreras. And just, you get into a Carrera, like an 80, it, especially when you're talking about like a 78 SC versus like an 84 Carrera, that first yeah. year Carrera, you get in that 84 Carrera and it just feels sluggish, even though yeah. the engine has way more power. You're like, what is going on No, So I'm, I, I actually uh, really agree with you. What do you think is interior color or this interior color way? Um, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not, a, I'm not a, t- you know, you always talk about a, convertible phobes or I forget yeah. what you call it. Uh, Cabrio phobes. I'm not a, I'm not a tan phobe. So I, I can, I can do a tan interior. Yeah. This is not my favorite uh, tone of tan. I'd rather have like a full brown interior like that dash or something right. would be better. Or maybe a black dash with a brown interior would be nice, but yeah. you know, definitely not my favorite colorway. but these days like beggars can't be choose, you know, or yeah, beggars can't be choosers. And uh, you kind of take what you get. Like a good car is a good car these days, I think. And uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it really is the matter of just get, I mean, it's really about condition more than color. I mean, you're absolutely yeah. right. I usually you see a black cover, a black dash top, and then a tan bottom. That's totally livable. Uh, but this weird kind of mocha top yeah. and uh, tan bottom I, it, with the blue on the exterior, uh, you know, I, I think yesterday we said this would look great. That interior colorway would look really good on like a chiffon white uh sc of the same era uh, it would yeah you know but with the blue it just it's a weird contrast anyways uh so scs are on the rise we all know that the prices of these are bonkers like everything else uh let's hear michael d bid eighty five thousand dollars that's where he thought it was going to go and i you know what did what do you think what are the miles oh boy that's a good question you're gonna have to stand by for a that's kind of like I think yeah, that's it was like low cool. miles. It was sixty-seven thousand okay. original oh, wow. miles, and Jeez, I believe dude. this may even be like a one or two owner. So that was kind of a big deal. Huh. Um, yeah, and it's in a, it's in a good place in the country to buy a right. car. You know, it's in Carmel, yeah. so it's like oh, yeah. so you know, you get a little free vacation out of it and stuff if you if you decide to drive it home or something that's like that. That's a great um, point. Yeah, I mean, go. Uh, out you look at yeah. that. I'll, I'll look at that all the time. I'll see a car in like Ohio. I don't know. You know, name yeah. your country place and i'm like oh it kind of sucks because i have to like i'll get it towed but you know i'll get it hauled but it doesn't make you want to have that experience of picking up a car i think that's a really fun part of a lot of this stuff uh i think deebs is probably pretty good dude 80 what do you say 85 you said eighty five thousand bucks yeah yeah i'll i'll go um i'll go yeah i'll go 82 no that's funny that's what i bid i was uh, i was under i was like yeah 85 is things are bonkers, but they're not quite that bonkers. I really didn't yeah. think it would break 70. I mean, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I didn't think it would break 80. Break I mean, 80 it would break yeah. 70, but I was like, yeah. And uh, this thing went for a whopping $90,911. <laughs> for an SC, dude. <laughs> for an oh SC. Six uh, months ago, that was a 40000 40 40-something thousand dollar car. So, Oh, my gosh. My brother bought an SC, a, a 1980 SC Euro brown over pasha 
uh, okay. a tan yeah. pasta. Yep. Uh, eight months ago for let's just say around under 30. Wow. No kidding. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the thing is when you're out there, you're looking around, there are still deals to be had. There are still reasonably priced nine elevens. Um, but low miles one owners, most of the people that are, that fit in that yeah. category, uh, have gotten the memo that they've kind of taken off. All right, here, we're going to yeah. uh, stick around. We're all the cars were on bring a trailer yesterday. Cause they were the only auction site, uh, that were, was basically open for lack of a better way to put it. Um, everyone else took the holiday off. Uh, this is another nine 11 shocking. We do it a lot of nine 11s on the car uh but we stepped up a few generations went to water cooled went with a 996 turbo uh with low miles this is 80 18 i'm sorry not 80 not 80 but 18,000 miles so very 18. low miles uh for this um i think it was an 03 996 turbo white is a very rare colorway on these you don't see a ton of white ones um it had looks like some aftermarket hres uh this car also had a what is it evo motorsports uh garrett flash. turbo upgrade yeah. yeah not just a flash but it had the intake and the oh. in the turbos and everything uh, i don't recall it saying exactly how much the horsepower was uh but other than the wheels it looks pretty stock um the interior is an absolutely hideous it's got that wood trim um uh, on metropole blue which i don't mind the metropole blue especially on the white uh but the wood on there i mean the metropole blue is so dark it looks like yeah. that. but uh what seats what do you, does it have uh, I believe it had sports seats. I'll get there. Oh, no, it did yeah. not. Our backs? Uh, uh, supple. Uh, oh, it has the uh, ball sack uh, ones. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, that's I can't just, stand uh, those. I would like, uh, I, I would shy away from a car with those, personally. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know you can it, swap yeah. it out. But yeah. it's like, yeah. uh, what do you think of man. 996 turbos in general? What's your take on Dude. it? I mean, <laughs> they're great. Yeah, yeah I, I uh, test drove, uh, I had a friend that during we were at Luft a few years ago and he had me test drive one for him because and he he couldn't make it um and i think it was like 40 grand at the time for a car with you know forty thousand miles original mm -hmm. owner kind of thing uh and and i've driven them in the past they're they're just really good cars and i think they're still i don't know what they're going for actually but i think they're a little undervalued still i mean you know metzger yeah. uh <laughs> like you do like three things and they're like you can drive them anywhere forever basically Really, and true. Uh, yeah. I think people are starting to, uh, you know, not like not be bothered by the looks of 996s. Um, you know, I, I I never really understood the hate too much, like the headlight thing. It's like, come on, go look at a 350Z from that era, or all these cars that ugly headlights. Like, it's yeah. not these aren't bad, but uh, yeah, I think they're awesome cars. And white is super rare. I would have put the stock wheels on if I was selling this thing because sure. this is it just kind of screams 2002. Yeah, I mean, that was my argument with Deeb yesterday is that, it, yeah, I think it's period correct. Um, those wheels aren't my favorite. I think they would do really well with some spacers, get them out. Uh, I think three-piece wheels on modern cars don't quite look right because the dish really kind of, it's an optical illusion that makes the diameter of the wheel look smaller. So they, even though it's a 19-inch mm -hmm. wheel, it looks like an 18, which looks too small for the car, and you certainly don't want to go with a 20 just to make it look better. Uh, the There's some weird wear on this car, and I was kind of hanging on that huh. cd player there for a second it looked like cigarette burns on the cd oh. but that was but that was in the in the boot in the front not in not yeah, in the yeah. interior so i don't know what the heck would have caused that um by all accounts this car looks like a really really nice car i've owned 996 turbos uh i had one that was similar to this with it had you know 600 you know brake horsepower dynoed i mean it's so easy to yeah. get extra horsepower out of these and the big question yesterday was like all right 996s are now accepted. They're kind of going into this weird 964 territory where maybe they're even yeah. worth more than 997s. Um, are th would you rather price being the same have this car or a 997 turbo? Oh, 997 turbo. Yeah. It's just a better car. I I don't think they with so there's a like a 996 GT3 versus a 997 GT3 is a different story because 996 mm. is, didn't have all the nannies and all this stuff so mm -hmm. it's a more engaging car but in this case I don't think I wouldn't say a 996 turbo is a more engaging car than a 997 turbo uh, and uh, so yeah I would go 997 turbo I believe all right well where do you think this car landed uh 18,000 miles and i'll give you a deep uh, deep i'm gonna go before you do i'm just gonna oh. oh he did he said 70 okay yeah i was gonna yeah. say 85 
85 is your number. And I'm with you. I thought it would go for more. Um, I don't think I didn't go quite as high as 85. I went 80,000. Yeah. I went well <laughs> over him, but not quite that uh, far. Uh, just to kind of spread the, or, you know, narrow the spread yeah. from a from a betting point of view. Uh, this car sold for seventy five thousand one dollar. Uh, so okay. I won that one. Uh, it split. I mean, we were literally a dollar away from a draw. Uh, someone adding the dollar to their bid put the uh, win in my category, but uh, uh, him and I both were, were right on either side of us. So um, I'm glad that I didn't go uh, with my inclination that it would have gone for more. I think this car. Yeah. Uh, with, I'm with you correct wheels uh the stock wheels just the stock wheels nothing else just yeah. put the stock wheels on this car i think it gets yeah. five thousand bucks more um, yeah and then one thing for people watching or whatever the, the 996 interiors if you think they're you know people might think they're kind of shitty the mm -hmm. quality's not the greatest but they are very modular so everything is easy to replace so all that wood can be easily replaced it's not yeah. It's not a lot of work at all. Like those vents pull out with one screw each. They're yeah. so easy to do. The door caps pop off. Like they have one screw. It's it. They're the most modular interiors, and they're actually built really well in that way. Where um, you could you could do all that stuff. A normal person can do it in their garage in no time at all. And you could buy all that stuff used in black or whatever color you, you can even buy carbon stuff. Whatever you kind of want, you can mm -hmm. replace all that stuff with very easily. That's a great take. Uh, you're absolutely right. And I've done that myself, having owned multiple 996s. Um, and, you know, the thing is, the 996 interior uh, may be less attractive than a 997 interior, but ergonomically, it is the better car. And I, I love to tell people about there's that bump that goes down the door strip just below the top yeah. of it. And it, it kind of sticks out a little bit, which is perfect for when your hands are on the steering wheel and you want to rest your elbow, but you don't want your elbow all the way up to the windowsill. You just want it yeah. like a little, like right there. It yeah. they did that, you know, Porsche thought of that stuff and people thought it was just kind of like weird looking aesthetic decisions, but it wasn't everything had, you know, like Porsche ethos uh, for yeah. a reason. Um, so and yeah, the reality is there isn't that much there. It's a very simple interior, like hearkening back to the older 911s. Um, so if you do like a center console delete, for example, yeah, it, it just clears up. It gives you that whole, that, that old 911 feel where you don't have any, you don't have anything right there under the dash. And it's, it's a nice, it's a nice feel. I, I, I dig them and they actually age pretty well. I mean, the dashes don't crack. It's yeah. like, there's only a few parts there and you can kind of do what you want with them. I, I hate it when people paint center consoles and stuff, but yeah. I think that cheapens them up, but um, yeah, they're not, they're not as bad as people say. Right. I'm driving a 991 right now. Um, and, yeah. uh, you know, it's a great car. It's fully spec. It's got all the bells and whistles and stuff like that. But I'm just sitting there going, I love this thing. But in 20 years, this is not the quality in that car is nowhere near what a 996 turbo or, oh, you know, it, yeah, it's yeah. just not, it's just not there. It's already got mm. things that are squeaking and stuff like that. And it's a 2014. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, that's Turbos great. are rad too because they offered. A lot of them have like full leather and that makes that interior pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. The plastic interior on a base, uh, 996 of that era is pretty bad. <laughs> it's your, yeah. that's a good point. Um, a car I like as an alternative to a 996, and uh, I think uh, up until maybe a nanosecond ago used to be a great option, uh, is this. Uh, let me bring it up. Uh, it is a 2007 BMW Z4 Coupe. Um, I don't know what you think about these cars, Lane, uh, but this one has 24,000 miles. It has the S54 engine. Uh, it's that inline six that everybody loves from BMW that they also put in their M3 of the time. Uh, these things are just bulletproof. Um, I, you know, Z, Z4s have always been kind of controversial in their looks, but I think just about everyone agrees that this is uh, just a great looking sports car. And I think it's one of the greatest looking sports cars of all time. Um, still, Whoa, you know, I really do with the hatchback and, and everything um you know it's just I, I think the amount of horsepower the amount of bang for the buck that you get out of this um up until right about now i mean look a 996 you buy a 996 uh for 30 40 thousand dollars uh you know you're talking about a car with 80 something thousand miles and you're going to be worried about ims bearings and silver yeah, yeah. scoring and all that stuff these things are you can pour sand in these engines and they'll keep going well, uh, i mean they do have they do have issues that need to be addressed 
the sure. S fifty fours. Like what? And and I'm not disagreeing you with you, but uh, what, what uh, are big, it, uh, isn't deal? it like uh, is it not rod bearings on these or which which the main uh, Vanu, uh, Vanos the, the Vanos I think is something that has to and then there's attention. something else. There's another big S fifty four issue. Um, and I don't know. Do these chassis are these prone to like cracking subframes and all that? Like the no, M3s? that was the Z three. That was the Z three. Well, and M and M threes. Yeah. E forty sixes, E thirty sixes. Yeah. Okay, um, so these are better. Yeah, the, these Z fours really were. I mean, you know, it was a it was a brand new car design. It was the new era. You know, they were moving on. Yeah. I, I can't remember the name of the designer. Obviously, again, it's Chris person. Bangle. Chris Bangle. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, these are just firecrackers to drive. I mean, it's just like yeah, yeah. such an old school sports car, and it, it, you just they just don't make anything like this anymore. It, it's yeah, it's comparable. So these are like. Uh, like a Porsche, you know, it's the typical way to describe it, but a Porsche is more of a scalpel and these are more of a sledgehammer. So these yeah. are more like the Viper motto of like high horsepower, rear wheel drive, sitting way back in the chassis. And it's like less refined handling, um, but it has this power and it's, they still handle well, but they are not comparable in that sense. It's like Porsche makes sports cars BMW does not make sports cars. They never made a sports car besides the M1 back in the eight, 1980 or whatever. Uh, these cars, the steering's a little less telepathic. You know, it's not you're not you're not fe feeling one with the car as much. You're more along for the ride, I would say. Uh, <laughs> have you driven a Z yeah. Z4M uh, coupe? I or, have. Or, or, yeah. cab, or cab? Okay. Yeah, I have, and I've driven you know E46 M3s, a bunch of mm -hmm. them, E36 M3s and stuff, and all of them are they're fun for what they are. They, but I don't think they replace a sports car. So I, I, I that's where I kind of disagree with you. We're like, you, it's apples and oranges a little bit. It's like they're always kind of making a they're they're taking a sedan ethos and making it into a sports car look, where this is more like a muscle car thing in a sports car body and da, da, da. it's always a hodgepodge of parts put together um and they're cool but and they've definitely grown on me i remember i was in de automotive design school when this car came out and it was mm. so controversial but then bangle did everything else he did and this was like oh the man remember that z4 it looks so good compared to all that other stuff yeah. so um you know I, I i do i do agree i think they look pretty cool and it's crazy they're fun. Oh. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you. Oh, off. I was just saying they're fun. They're definitely fun cars. Yeah, I just I think they're a great bang for the buck. Uh, I, I know I've said that over and over again, but it's remember when they came out. Uh, it was during the recession, and uh, they couldn't give them away. I mean, they yeah. they they were released at the absolute worst possible time. The Z3 or I'm sorry, the Z4M Roadster came out a little earlier, and sales were really good. Uh, but then they came out with this uh, with the coupe, and every and you know the, all the journalists were like, "Oh my God, this is the way it should have been in the first place." Um, and then uh, the economy did what it did. And I remember be going into BMW dealerships and, you know, this was supposed to be a $70,000 car and they were literally selling them for $40,000 brand spanking new on the show. Wow. They could yeah. not give them away. This just was just not a yeah. car that anybody wanted. Um, and, uh, to that, I mean, where do you think something like this sits now from a price point of view? What, what would What's you the miles? This car? Uh, the miles on this car stand by, it was pretty good. Pretty low. Let's see here. The the miles were twenty four thousand miles. That's really low miles. Yeah. Um, so uh, do you want to hear Michael Deeb's bid? Michael Deeb. Bid. Let me let me just let me just uh, guess mull it over. That. Okay, what do you? Let got? me let me just. I want to do it without any because I don't want to be the guy that's just like going two thousand under Michael Deeb's bid or whatever. <laughs> that's what um, I do. That's and, my move. What are you talking and, about? And in, I know, I know. You guys cheat. And in reality, I don't really know this market, but uh, I know. Z three M's are already gone. I had a friend sell one for seventy something grand recently. Uh, so, and I think these are obviously, you know, uh, all ships car. rise or whatever. And this yeah. is a better car for sure. Oh my gosh! Uh, so I would say I'm going to go thirty nine. Thirty nine. All right, that's a that's a good bid. I think uh, six months ago, that's what this car would have gone. Oh, for. really? Yeah. Uh, Michael D bid this thing at forty eight thousand dollars. I bid it at forty thousand, forty five thousand. My bid was forty five thousand. Uh, this car sold. I missed a Yahtzee. Very close. Forty five five. Forty five thousand okay. five hundred dollars. Um, wow. 
you know, Deeb really thought it would hit 50, um, but he was being conservative. And I think, uh, I think $50,000 for one of these is right around the corner. Um, the, you know, I think it's coming. I mean, especially with 24,000 miles. Um, yeah. But, you know, you think about it for $45,000, what do you get in Porsche for 45 grand at this point? Uh, you know, I mean, you can get an SC, of course, or maybe you can get an SC, or at least you used to be yeah. able to get a C, but you're probably going to get an old tired SC, uh, you know, whereas yeah, this no. car is a car that yeah. if you had, I, I love one of the things I love about your podcast, your, uh, the driving while awesome podcast is your, you know, your car solution game. Your, are we yeah. doing, you know, your two car solution, your one car solution, your three car solution. Um, this is certainly one of those cars that for some people could be a one car solution car. You, you know, I mean, for if you sure. don't. If you don't need a bunch of space, uh, this is an everyday driver that you can bang on the uh, on the mountains. What do you think of that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a. I think BMW does that really well. That one car solution thing because yeah. they take a you know and in that respect, like an M3 would probably be a better choice because you can fit people in the back seat and you have a trunk and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But uh, yeah, and I think that's why their sports cars tend to not sell that well. And that might be why these cars are kind of going up in value because there isn't as many of them too. And they didn't sell well uh, because people yeah. are, when they go, when they go to shop for a sports car, they're not going to buy a BMW. They're going to buy a Porsche <laughs> because every mag, this thing, it never won a single magazine test. I can guarantee it. It lost to every box it went up against. They lost to every 911. You know, it never won a, and the same with the Z3 It never won a single test against a Porsche. And well, uh, it was always like the like crappy, you know, it was always like, oh, the steering's not as good, the seats aren't as good, da, 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 da. It, 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 but it was more powerful. But it still had the same zero to 60 times because it couldn't, you know, put it down. But yeah. uh, that's kind of yeah, the, I, the, it, that's a It's true because, like, I people are always talking to you. I'm sure you get this all the time. Oh, this car has more horsepower. Or that car has more yeah. torque or whatever. And it's like, all right, 2007 BMW M3 has, what, 400 50 horsepower or something ridiculous the e92 m3 the base oh, 997 yeah. has 325 and they have the same track times you know so mm -hmm. how important is horsepower again it's where the horsepower is and how it's used in the car uh so i i, I, I couldn't agree with you more there um yeah. well there here's a question for you uh z4 m coupe like 2006 versus a boxster s which who'd you rather on that one? A nine eight seven, nine eight nine eight one. What are we looking at? Let's see. So a two thousand six would be the uh, the later nine eight seven. Generation. Yeah, that would be the... nine eight seven Boxster. I mean, dude, I'm just a Porsche guy. Like, I'm gonna go with yeah. Porsche. It just like moves me more. Like, I, I like I said, these cars are fun, but they're not like as. I'm more of a slow car, fast guy. So I like yeah. the the dynamics. I like the fact that like the precision and everything, as opposed to like the brute strength of this yeah. thing. So. That's why I have an I, 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 It's slow I take, as hell. But. <laughs> well, you drive that thing fast, man. Um, I I don't th I don't take that uh, that the Z4M is as imprecise and as hammerish as you do. But uh, I don't know. You know, I've never owned Here's... one. I've driven the heck out of them, and I I think that they're a lot more uh, sports car y than. I mean, I just they are a little tail happy, but they're not. They're certainly not Viper or Corvette ish. Uh, that engine is pretty darn far back, so it does have kind of a mid engine feel it's just the it's mid-engine where it's right in front of you instead of behind yeah you. and they are 50 50 yeah. rate distribution yeah. are close to it so i mean they they have a yeah and they're uh, i don't it's hard to um i mean bmw slow steering ratio always gets to me too um yeah. they're always have really slow steering well if you want but. to talk about uh, another sports car that we can you really want some debate here here we go uh get a load of this 1978 Kelmark. Have you ever heard of one of these? Look at this goofy oh, wow. looking thing. Is it a Volkswagen uh, or a Pinto? What is well, this? Well, yeah. So, I mean, that's we do say that the, you know, Bidner's your is the daily nerd out on the most interesting cars. And we chose this car because it's definitely interesting. These are yeah. a fiberglass kit car that was made to look uh, like a Ferrari Dino, but failed miserably. A lot of people thought they were supposed to be a, a, you know, kind of a 904 knockoff, but also a big failure mm -hmm. in that regard. They really don't look like anything. They just look like kind of a mess. Um, but it's, you know, it's this kind of sitting on a Volkswagen frame. You're absolutely right. Most of them came with Volkswagen engines. This one is particularly interesting because of what's under the rear hood. The engine is all the way in the back. It's not in the middle. Uh, this thing has a 2.2 
Porsche 911 T engine from a 1970 911 T, which make all of a sudden makes this weird kind of kit car thing almost interesting. interesting. Yeah, right. I mean, I can only imagine what it's like to drive this goofy thing with all that weight in the back, no weight anywhere else. Uh, this fiberglassy, flexy, noisy monstrosity. Uh, what what is your opinion of this Frankenstein? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure like Brad Brownell would think this is the best car ever made or something, but uh, I am not Brad Brownell. And uh, yeah, I have a hard time. Look at those door panels, man. That was uh, bad. He's got a uh, full it's roll cage so, in it, at least, you know. know. And it has a 914 or 911 steering wheel, basically. Yeah. Or it's a full nine, wheel, and it's a full Porsche powertrain. The transmission oh, gauge, is a port, gauge is cluster. A, yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's a 901 transmission. And, yeah, if um, I remember correctly, yeah. Yeah, and then a 2.2 liter, so I know it's a T, so it puts out 140 horsepower or something, yeah. uh, 130 horsepower maybe. Uh, In a car that probably know. weighs dude, less than 1,800 pounds, it's like, all right. I don't know, dude. When would you pick to buy this? Like, it's crazy to me that like anyone would buy this unless you like. Well, here's like, here's what saw I thought. this the... when you were a kid in the 70s and thought yeah, it was right? really cool. When, uh, you know, yesterday on the show, I was saying, I thought this car was interesting. You know, Deep asked me, had you ever heard of one of these before? And surprisingly, uh, yes, I have. Recently, uh, I was looking for cars to bring on the Targa Baja uh, rally mm -hmm. down in Mexico. And you know how the Targa Bajas are. Uh, the, the Specifically, the Targa Bajas restrict, all, it's 76 or older, unless it's a continuation, yeah. which is why they're all the 911s. Um, and so I was looking for a cheap you know, a uh, car that I could buy for like 10 grand or something like that and bring on the Targa Baja and just beat the hell out of and maybe leave in Mexico or something. Uh, and this was, you know, three years ago or whatever. So I was cruising around Craigslist and I found one very similar to this, but it had a Volkswagen engine. It was just like a two liter Volkswagen engine or something like that. It certainly didn't have this awesome engine. Um, I yeah. mean, look at that. That's uh, with the IT. I mean, that's, that's got to have a yeah. little bit of poop, cool. right? Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, so yes, I'd heard of them. I went and drove the thing. It was absolutely awful. I mean, it was just like, okay, this is not a place I want to be at all um, for any amount of time. So, of course, I passed. Uh, but, you know, I'd love to at least try driving this and see, see what the heck it was like. Where, where do you think a monstrosity yeah. like this landed yesterday? Dude, <laughs> this is like the most difficult thing ever. I mean, the yeah. engine's worth money, right? The engine and trans exactly. combo. So exactly. Right there, that's kind of where your money is at. And then I, I can't see someone. I see someone buying this for that, unless I'm. I mean, I really know nothing about these, so maybe there's a small following of three weirdos throughout the country that really like them. Uh, right. Dude, twenty thousand. Okay, you went big. I mean that engine. Well, I mean, I feel, like, I feel like the powertrains. Right? Yeah, yeah, I feel like the yeah. powertrains were twelve. You know, twelve to fifteen with like an engine and trans. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Michael Deeb agreed with you. He went with Ages. seventeen thousand uh, dollars, and I went under him at, at sixteen. Uh, when we were when we were talking about the car, it was only at like thirteen with like a couple hours to go. Uh, oh. And this car only got another thousand dollars. It went to fourteen thousand mm. nine hundred four dollars and sold. Uh, it was a no yeah. reserve car. So I think for fourteen nine, um, instead of buying good. the powertrain, you could fly out somewhere and drive the powertrain home and then take it out of the car and junk the rest of it, or put yeah, a Volkswagen wonder... engine in that thing, and you probably still get ten grand for it. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, you just swap in a Volkswagen engine and trans and swap it out, and then. I mean, that thing would win cars and coffees. Right? <laughs> I mean, you, know, sure. you show up in that weird thing and you're like, you're the fuck, you're the bell of the ball. You might get someone to step, to get up out of their lawn chair to go and see what yeah. it is. That's crazy. You're yeah. absolutely right. All right. We yeah. spent a lot of time recapping yesterday's cars. Uh, so we'll try to move it along on today's cars. If you haven't already hit the subscribe, like, or notification button, please do so now. Uh, today, I think, is going to be kind of a big deal uh, for our friends over at P car market. They, because you know, oh, yeah, they, the, the they singer, have right? themselves one of these. This is, uh, you know, all the, for those of you who are just listening, this is uh, a night. Let's hear 
So this was built on a 1992 964, of course, like all the Singers are now, but this one was built a couple of years ago. This is, of course, a Singer uh, Porsche reimagined 911. Uh, you know, I could describe one. Everybody knows what the heck this car is. Uh, they take all the best bits. Uh, they, they start with a 964. They remove every last thing on the car. They they strip it down to metal, uh, repaint it. Uh, re they, they replace all the rivets. They replace, I mean, there's pretty much everything that can come Dude, off. Dude, they the replace the body. It's a carbon yeah, it's a carbon oh, yeah it's a carbon everything except for the doors and the you know so isn't yeah. it just parts of the fenders or is it like literally everything now full fenders i believe wow yeah, yeah i thought they were just grafting parts but i think it depends on when uh as well. i thought but this it was is a full, newer one yeah you could see all the carbon i i was hanging out intimately with a couple of them the other day and Oh. Um, you can see all the carbon weave and everything through the wow. paint. Yeah. Look at this interior. I mean, bespoke, it, it just isn't a, a word that, that is enough to describe one of these. And there are yeah. so many, so many companies out there copycatting. How many times have you heard Lane? Uh, and I don't know what, how pissed off it Aster. makes you. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It's just like a singer, but for half the price, yeah. like, no, it's not. No, no <laughs> one just, does it like they yeah. do it really. Yeah. I mean, there is. You go and look at these other ones. It's like, oh yeah, that's a hodgepodge of like stuff thrown into a car. But yeah. these are, like you said, it's so every part is bespoke. So, you know, even the prototypo wheel is redone and everything like that. So, yeah, even um, even really the little cool. even the little rivets to hold the trim on. And if it was a plastic rivet in the original, they'll replace it with oh. something metal and something that lasts. Yeah. Um, yeah. There is not a single element of this car that it's left over uh, to its original. Uh, they just go bonkers. I mean, the quilt. Yeah. I mean, look at this. this is, come on, man. There's yeah, I know. Crazy. I love the mirrors going through the through the glass on the side. You know, the, right? You know, so this cool. engine. Um, what about this engine? I mean, yeah. A, it's a is that one of the? Yeah. That's an Ed Pink one. So that's yeah. a, this is a later car. Okay. Yeah. Cool. This one's only two years old. I think it has six thousand miles on it. Comes with a spare set of seats. Oh wow. And color yeah, matched wheels. wheels. Yeah. So they went with the big seventeen-inch wheels. Uh, on yeah. their version um have you ever driven a, a singer i mean it's it sounds nope. interesting that you've just been around one or have you gotten a chance to even ride in one i have not i have never ridden in one i was with um so i was at my friend's place uh greg garnu i'll throw a shout out a shout out to you but a revival nice. road in monterey uh he manages a couple collections and he has the first production singer ever which wow. is actually built on a g-body car yeah yeah they really and big. then yeah, and then he has a, uh, and then he has a later one, which is you know, um, like this one, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I was you know, I've, so I've been around him, opened him up, sat in him, all that kind of stuff, but yeah, I've never had the pleasure of riding one or driving one or anything. So, but I don't know, everything I've heard is they're really cool and. You at know, the last uh, at the last Ren Sport reunion, uh, when we were driving, they had that Momo thing from uh, was it yeah. Bondurant up to yeah, uh, I was on it. Yeah, yeah, we were all there. Did you? Yeah. There was that purple one. Um, yeah, we he was followed the purple. He was behind you. Yeah, we followed him for probably two hundred miles uh, and yeah. kind of got lost with him. We all went the wrong way. Uh, we had uh, late, uh, not late. Uh, we had uh, Dupkis, uh, Dustin Dupkis in his nine nine three RS tribute, uh, and then mm -hmm. it was me and my busted nine nine three and a singer. Yeah, we were just tab. we were just spending hours. It was just, oh man, it was just so awesome to be hit behind that car. And to yeah. the guy's credit, he was driving the living piss out of it. This was not one yeah. of these that just sits there. Kind of like now this this particular car has six owners um and it has wow. around six thousand miles right uh you know these never come up for sale uh no because what do they put out like eight cars a year if that something yeah and really they usually right, trade yeah. internally so i believe they're kind of like it's like rod emery does the same thing where it's like mm -hmm. if you're going to sell this car mm -hmm. contact us and then we'll find a buyer for you because they yeah. want to trade them internally and they don't want them to go to market so yeah. i'm surprised yeah. to see one at, on market you know at at all, let alone P car market. Um, yeah. I'm also surprised in the listing, it doesn't say which car this is. Like that is a key element. I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. Maybe I'm mm -hmm. dumb, but I would think in the headline, it would say like they have Miami. They always name it a city, right? Mm, right. So there's like the Dubai car. There's the Miami car. There's the Monterey. There's the, there's, they always name a car and this doesn't say it anywhere. And that's kind of um, an important part of these cars. 
Well, I mean, so, I think that's what happens when you get guys like the PCAR market selling these things. I mean, I really, uh, you know, this is a big feather in their cap to get this car on their site. Yeah. Um, this is one of those cars that, like you say, it's outside of the loop. I think this car, we will see this for sale again because this is probably going to be one of two or three singers that will ever be on the open market. And it seems like yeah. once they're out, they're out. Uh, and I think that's going to affect the value, but not that much. Uh, I think the danger for PCAR market or anyone who own, or owns or operates one of these auction sites uh, is hubris right now. Car values are so high. This particular car is going to go for a record high, I'm sure. Yeah. And at the end of that auction, PCAR market is going to pack themselves on the back uh, yeah. and, say, and tell themselves how great a job they did. And really the question will be how much money did they leave on the table if this car were on even, you know, rad, would Rad for Sale carry this? Uh, oh, no, you know, they wouldn't. Uh, but it is an i64 yeah. but yeah. one thing i will say i think anyone could sell this car right in the whole world it doesn't matter it's it's a one of one it's the only one on the market right now Pete, everyone knows about these cars yeah. if this car is for sale by the dude next door to my to me on craigslist it's going to get the same amount as it will on bring a trailer on pk market on cars and bids on whatever i don't think this matters at all. I think the word's going to get out. If yeah. if it's for sale, the word's going to get out. It's probably you know, Singer is probably telling all their clients. I don't, I don't know, but you know, everyone everyone knows about it. That's a buyer, yeah. and it's going to sell for the same price no matter where it is. I don't think there's money left on the table on a car like this. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right because this is going to get uh, you know, and it's crazy that it went to to P car market because I mean there are yeah. other platforms that uh, would have charged less. Uh, P car market's premiums are a little. Anyways, yeah. uh, we won't get into pictures too much aren't of that. that pro either. I, was, mm. I, I mean they're they're good, they're good, they're fine. But um, you know whatever. But I would think you'd do like really pro photos for a car like this, and I would think Singer would have already had pictures in the bank, you know, that they right. took. Yeah, I wonder if Singer really doesn't speak. allow you to do that. If uh, I wonder if there's some kind of rules. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's a very good point. I mean, a driving video, how awesome would that have been? I mean, yeah. in a car like this, I mean, it's, it's as close as most of us are going to get. That's why I'm a little car. weirded out that it doesn't say what which car it is, too. Yeah. It's like, is it, it – I don't know. Well, here's the thing, man. Uh, it has two a little over two hours to go. What? Uh, you know, I guess, uh, do you want to start or you want me? It's got, it's sure. $800,000 right now. Oh my God. Uh, flat with yeah. two hours, 45 minutes to go. Where is this car? This car is physically in Florida. So not a great road trip destination. Um, nope. if this thing were, if this thing were somewhere in the middle of the country or West, I would definitely go, you know, if I were a buyer, yeah. I would drive this thing home, you know, but the, you know, I, is a, is a driver going to buy this or is someone that's just going to trailer it and put it in their little museum at this point? I hope, I feel like the, there's a good percentage of people that buy these that are actually drive them. You know, yeah. I think it is one of those cars, but, but like you said, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. And I don't think mileage is the biggest deal on these cars since they are starting with old car with miles and it's, yeah, yeah. it's a different thing. They're so rare and it's so specific. So uh, well, color combos and all that. Yeah, I don't know. This car, I think they run like 600 now. They might start at 600 or, you know, I don't know. I think the the normal rate is 600, 650 or something like that right now. But you're two to three year waiting list to get one. And then it's so I'm going to go. I don't know, dude. I'm going to go one million. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go one yeah. million even. Yeah, boy, that's the number I was going to take. So you're going to say one million even. Um, boy, that's a lot of zeros I'm typing in our little database here. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, that's the number I was going to do. <laughs> so I'm going to go yeah. 1,964,000. I mean, I, oh, nice. I, I know that's kind of uh chicken, but, um, I think you'll probably win. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's such a I would bet the over. place. Yeah. I, I think it's just going to go a little over, you know, I, I'm going to tell a story that I'm, I'm not sure I'm a lot. I should, um, I know someone who was in the market for one of these. They went out uh, to uh, to shop for it. Um, they went down to the singer office, and he relayed the story as kind of like this. He sat down uh, with uh, the representative, and the representative said, here's how much the car is. And this person uh, that was shopping for the car is not a nobody. I'm not going to say his name, of course, but 
he's somebody. Um, so yeah. it wasn't like he was just some Yahoo rich guy that nobody ever heard of walked into the door. So he sits down, they're talking, he's setting up his order and he's a guy that has a gajillion other cars and he's not, you know, he doesn't care that he's going to have to wait two years, three years, whatever, you know, he's just, whatever, just sign me up. Let's get the paperwork done here. I, I want to get to telling you what I want. And then one day you're going to tell me my car's here and I'm going to get it. And it's going to be a great day. So he's sitting there and he sees his rep, go and talk to another person that was in their showroom. Um, and uh, he apparently it was within just close enough an earshot. And the guy was basically asking, how much money do I have to pay to move up in line uh, to oh. get my car sooner? And my guy got up and left. He's like, yeah, if yeah, they'll yeah. even entertain that question. He's like, I don't want to work with them. And, uh, you know, I think that's a stain on Singer's reputation as good as it is. Uh, you know, they need to put the kibosh yeah. on anything even close to like that. Uh, because, but I say that and they're getting all the money in the world. <laughs> so it's like yeah. you know, to them, oh, we're not going to fix what isn't broken, but they don't re quite realize that the, that that's, that kind of thing is getting out. And for me, I, uh, you know, I'll, even if I, hit the big one. I'm not getting one of these unless it's a pre-owned one. So I don't know. What do yeah. you think? Would you, if you ever hit the big time, uh, would you lay the money down for one of these? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I know your, I, I know your buddy Bradley Brownell would rather have the Kelmar cause he'd never spend more than a hundred thousand dollars on a car. He's made that quite clear. Cause he doesn't realize that there's a thing called a pre appreciation right. and he doesn't <laughs> understand what that is. He also yeah. doesn't understand like putting your money somewhere is more valuable than just putting it like, in your pocket um but uh and you can enjoy a car like this but well are, I cars, think if, can, are cars ever really a good investment compared to i mean yes the, some car you could absolutely yeah. make an, uh, an argument that oh yeah if we filled a warehouse full of 911s uh six months ago uh yeah. we'd be in the money right well heck, well, if you bought the warehouse you'd be doing way better okay uh, so know. actually uh, to argue that i'm not arguing necessarily the cars can be a good investment i mean obviously but it's more of a thing where like if i'm a billionaire yeah why would i not buy a, why would i not buy a singer that yeah. isn't going to lose money we know yeah. it's not going to lose we know you're not going to lose out on it i can experience it i have this awesome car if i buy a thirty thousand dollar jetta it's going to sell for half the price in two years i'm going to lose half the price of that car i'm not going to lose on this thing dude like yeah. you know and i'm going to enjoy this amazing piece of art rather than driving a prius or whatever yeah, so yeah you know and i'm losing money on my prius absolutely so and and yeah there's maintenance and all that stuff but there's also the there's the joy of ownership of a of a vehicle and that's yeah. why i i that's why i have cars i like yeah. driving cars i like the way look cars look i like the way cars feel and if i had a it, you know it's all relative to how much money you have in the bank basically yeah so uh, yeah, do you know. want more I, Bitcoin or do you want something you can yeah. drive around? <laughs> and I don't care if I had a billion dollars, I wouldn't mind losing yeah. a couple hundred thousand dollars on a car I loved either. So uh, whatever. But I, I think I, I could see like if you were a billionaire buying, you know, one of these. I, I'd have a hard time ordering because I am I feel like I'm pretty impatient. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, if one came up on market, I, you know, I like the colorway. I might I could definitely see pulling the trigger. <laughs> Well, uh, we're gonna we're going way long here today, so we're gonna rip through these uh, next few cars. Uh, this uh, P we're gonna stay on P car market for a minute. They've got a uh, another shocking another Porsche. Uh, they've got a 1997 993, uh, just a standard 993 with nice low miles, 68,000 miles, uh, and pastel yellow. I'm not sure what I think of this color, uh, but by all accounts, this is a really nice 993. Coupe and 993 coupes, like everything else that's uh, fun to drive, are super hot right now. And uh, this is an, a this is not a PTS color. Uh, this is a, definitely a color that came that these cars came in. Um, you know, it's got the cup two wheels, which are blue. It's got the gray interior, which is not me. Uh, I don't know about you, Lane. I'm sure you'll let me know on that in a second. Um, but you know, I mean, talk about a great driver with fairly low miles, something that you could get into and not feel ashamed of putting, my, or not necessarily ashamed, but uh, you know. You can just rack up the miles on this car. Oh, maybe it's not gray here. That is black. Oh, no. It's, yeah, that's it's black. black yeah. With the yellow, yeah. those are definitely aftermarket gauge faces. But, oh, those uh, suck. Yeah, yeah. Those, those are pretty awful. Is there um, speed yellow, too? They're like a different yellow. So yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That canary yellow. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this, this pastel yellow. Man, that, those seats. Do those seats look like they've been recovered? No, dude. Those are redone. Those are yeah. like. 
Those have been they're too, there's something they're wrong too, about yeah, them. Too puffy yeah. or something. Yeah, because the back seats. Yeah, look at the back seats, guys. If you look at the back yeah. seats, you can tell that's what Porsche leather looks like. Uh, whatever yeah. they re- recovered these with is newer. Uh, and I mean, but hey, you know, maybe they had supple leather before, and he replaced it out with this, and that, sure. and, which would have yeah. been good on him. I don't know. This car is just a fantastic all around basic C two nine nine three, which is the car you want. Uh, it looks appears by all accounts to be basically a stock. Yeah. Six speed manual stereo. car, yeah. Uh, what do you think of nine nine threes? Uh, I they're <laughs> I'm kind of nine nine threes are they're all right, they're cool. They're uh, all right, but they're all right, dude. I'm kind of like I loved them when they first came out. That was like my dream car. You know, kills bugs fast. Uh, I remember the first time I saw those electronic headlights in person and at night down by the boardwalk, and I was like, oh man, look at that thing, so amazing. Um. I do think they can look pretty cartoonish though. <laughs> and uh, I, now I'm kind of like not as big of a fan. I don't, I, one thing that bothers me is the bumper fitment on the front always mm. bothers me. It always mm. gets all wavy yeah. under the headlight. It just like stuff like that bothers me a lot. I get OCD about stuff. And, uh, but this one, I think, I think they can look really cool. They just have to be lowered a little and, yeah. you know, wheels spaced out. Um, Pastel is kind of neat. Good. I, I never i don't think i it's not my color choice or anything but uh you know but uh it's definitely a rare color and i don't mind cup twos they're all right but um yeah the interior looks a little funky like the it, the seats don't look black enough or something yeah but, yeah. yeah i don't know they, they almost look like that they might oh. be that metropole blue which i don't think they are but uh yeah. yeah regardless this car uh is all stock so you know it's kind yeah. of four by four status um, maybe make a safari out of it. I think it's too clean to make a safari out of it. It's really not. Um, I'm with you on those front bumpers. Uh, you know, I have a 993, you know, that was just a base, you know, it was just a regular 993 cab and I yeah. changed the whole front end. Cause I think it really looks Miata ish. Uh, it's really kind of suffers from kind of that weird nineties thing, but the headlights yeah. and the nose and all the other stuff are great. Uh, the hips, of course, you know, when you lower yeah, yeah. these cars, uh, lowering them just a little bit, uh, I can't tell you how many people have asked me, come up to me and looked at my car and like, I didn't know they made wide body 993 yeah, yeah. like they didn't it's just low yeah. and that just stretches it out um yeah. so this just car, euro ride height yeah. yeah right row would would make yeah. a huge difference on this car so i think this is a great car to start with um yeah. uh you know or you know if you're one of those people that uh, has all the monies uh and you want a daily driver how cool would this car be you know the ac is gonna Super work cool. uh it's got you know all the airbags and stuff all right where's it gonna land what do you think uh let me let me see where it's at right now so stand by here and I will give you an update before yep. we bid. Let's see here right now. The gearing's too tall on these, by the way. You think? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, second uh, gear is like you're a little bit, yeah, a little too. Two hours to go. It's sitting at sixty-five thousand nine nine three on P car market. This car is located. Where is this car? It looks like it's in Los Angeles, so it's kind of the perfect spot, okay. uh, close to all the Porsche buyers. Where do you think this is going to land? Uh, I'm going to go 78 grand. You're going to go 78 on the 97993. Uh, I'm going to go, I mean, with that G body SC going for, what did that go for yesterday? 90. 90. Yeah. Uh, this car has to be, I'm going to say 95. Um, this has to be worth more than, uh, a night, uh, an SC. It has to be worth more than an SC. How could it not be more worth more than an SC? How in what planet know, is a 993 with 60 something thousand miles worth less than an 82 SC in a weird ass color combination? 82 uh, SC has better sense of occasion. Oh, really? It's, more, it's a more analog experience. What do you guys think? Tell us in the comments. Is Lane Bonkers better gearing? 993, the better car. I'm not is saying that... the better car. We know a, a newer car, a newer Porsche is a better Porsche. Okay. That's not the argument. It's whether or not it has more feels. And I think that's why we're all searching for these older cars now when yeah. these new cars are out. Every car is better than every. I, I had a Kia K5 GT the other day, <laughs> right. a test car. The thing has 290 horsepower, pushes 0.9 something on the skip pad with all seasons. Yeah. But was I yearning to go driving on the mountains? Hell no. And But that's like that's the whole thing. We're all searching for that that analog experience. And I think, uh, I think 993s were the first ones that kind of like got away from that a little bit, you know, cause they were, they weren't that fat. They weren't that quick, the tall gearing, at least in our, on our roads around here. I mean, sure where you are, it's probably fine, but 
you've been on our tight, twisty roads. And well, you know, years, I, I, like... I'm a Northwest guy. I came up in, in, you know, outside of Seattle. So I, yeah. the roads there are far more like what they are where you're at. Uh, yeah. And I'm with you. I, you know, look, I, the 993, again, if we'll play your, you know, your game. And they're heavy. Uh, uh, yeah, but they've got the power to compensate for it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. Uh, they're 150 pounds more than a 996 of the next 150 so pounds. I think it's 150 because yeah. they yeah. weigh 2976 and these weigh 31 something. Yeah. Just change out the rear uh, cans and you'll lose uh, half that. Most of that. I'm just saying, dude. <laughs> it's I'm just true, saying. It's true. It's, and, and, you know, you talk about three fours being underpowered on a 996 and that's more power than these. Yeah. And less weight. I mean, oh, okay. well, way more so rev happy engines. So, not, would you would you prefer uh, a nine a dot one nine nine six over a nine nine three? So, as far as a, as, as far driving, as, as, far as uh, pure yeah. like driving, I think they're yeah. pretty close. I still do like the the build quality of a nine nine three, though. I like that old schoolness of it. But um, as far as like a driving experience, I do think a nine nine six is a better driving car. Yeah. If we're just looking at a, the better car, you know. Sure. I mean, the newer you get, the the easier it is to drive. Yeah. I don't know. The 993s. I think to your point, uh, they are the most refined of the air cooled car. Uh, and I, you know, they, boy, uh, they do lack power. I mean, again, I own one, and I'm always going, God, I wish this thing had a little bit more power. That's why I think so many people think the 993 Turbo is like the best Porsche of all time because yeah. it is the air cooled car and it has the power to make up for it. Um, but the, uh, you know, a, a 993 versus an SC. Boy, that's a tough. I, I it's so hard because they're both great in their own right, and you know, I, I, I'm probably gonna lean towards the 993 generally, um, but I, I can't really, I can't make a good argument saying no. Uh, the don't buy the SE over a 993. I think that, however, though the price. Um, it just doesn't make sense that an SE is worth as much as a 993. That just yeah, but you got to look at it like a long hood is more than a SC, dude. It's always been that way. The older yeah. car, the, it's it's just the way it is. Like well, it hasn't always been that more way. rare. But, it but it, the 993s it, have been. I mean, and I'm not saying they should or shouldn't. But yeah. let's be honest. The 993 has, for whatever, for one reason or the other, has always been the most valuable of the air cooled cars, and it is just now that. The other it wasn't more valuable catching. than like a 72 911S or right, something. A lot, I mean, well, like, I mean, come on, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. that's crazy. Because I, I, in 2008, I bought a 996 and I was looking at 993s for 28 mm. grand. It wasn't yeah, like, yeah. They, weren't, they weren't Yeah, but, but SCs, then, how uh, much was an SC <laughs> back then? Well, like yeah, nine, an SC was 15 you know, or, eight, or, or you know, 12 or something. And a, and you a, get them under 10 all day long. And a 964 was 9 grand. So, but I mean... Yeah, I don't the know. 993s never got dirt cheap. I mean, they got dirt cheap no. relative to today's, but they never like the, like you said, the 964 totally like the cheapest th those yeah. were just you couldn't give them away. SEs always kind of were like baseline, but they really weren't that expensive. Uh yeah. same thing with, you know, Carreras had a little bit more money. Yeah, the long hoods uh but for the longest time long hoods were when the 993 came out, long hoods were kind of worthless unless you were talking about like a you know, maybe, yeah, a, a I mean, they were or something like that. Yeah. They were 12 to, I mean, 20 grand or something like that, but you could all, I mean, if you got an S with like the external oil filler, yeah. like a 73 or whatever, I mean, that was yeah. still a twenty. Eight thousand dollar car or something, right? Like that. But and then nine nine threes were at that at were that, 50, at that time. Nine, yeah. 50, the base price was like fifty nine, I believe, fifty nine yeah. something. Yeah. So the uh, so that pocket of value kind of moves around, but I think yeah. kind of to your point that the nine nine three, uh, everything is catching up to the nine nine three, and nine six fours are clearly worth more than nine nine threes now. Uh, yeah, if you yeah. said that five years ago, people would be like, get the heck off of the interwebs. They're rarer they're though. Banned. That was yeah, when Porsche was yeah. in their crisis, and they couldn't make you know they couldn't yep. sell cars, and everyone thought they were kind of lame because they and just everyone added. loved the 993 and so yeah. it was compared yeah. to, to compared to that and they got so yeah. cheap that the ones that did make it uh or the ones that were out there just got you know they, they were abused and destroyed so yeah, yeah, yeah. i i think yeah. we're all over the place on this but i think when it comes down to it we're actually pretty close um 
so anyways, yeah, it's just going to be interesting. So you said 78,000. I said 95,000. Holy cow. Yeah. We spent a lot of time on that. Let's go over to bring <laughs> a trailer uh, and talk about something other than the Porsches over at uh, Peacock Market. Let's get off a of long it's Island. time. Oh, about geez, time. Louise, come on. Let's get to this. Uh, this pretty cool. I think this is a 1988 E28. Uh, what is this? This is an E28, right? Isn't that what they call it? Yeah, this? yeah. E28 uh, M5. M5. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, what's your experience with these, man? What, I, they're I'm good. I've never know. driven. Yeah, I've never driven an M5. I've driven a bunch of E28s and stuff, and they're good cars. Uh, they're yeah, these are super cool, and they only came in black. They uh, primarily tan interiors. There was like a couple that were black interiors. I think you know the number with black interiors is like five cars or something yeah. crazy. So uh, they're all gonna be this black over tan. U.S. bumpers are ugly, so if you you know do the Euro swap, it's really cool. But that does require like cutting out the center section and welding in new side. Mm. It's, it's more of a job than you would think. It's not just bumpers, uh, but yeah. yeah, super cool cars. Uh, well, isn't this Chris Harris? Doesn't Chris Harris have one of these? Doesn't he like say that this is the best so. car of all time or something like that? He, yeah, this is actually his first one. real sports car or something. Um, mm-hmm. This one had an updated transmission of some sort and a bunch of motor work to it. Uh, it has 174,000 miles, but boy, looking at the interior, it looks, it looks pretty nice. darn clean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for something good. of this era, no cracks in the dashboard. Oh, yeah. Is that a deal killer for you? Uh, for me, a deep, I know, and I always just bust. If, if it has a crack in the dash, it's like everything else can yeah. be great. But if it has a crack in the dash, it's like, oh, I don't want it. Because like, you oh, have to look funny. at that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm like a, I've always been the like bargain shopper a little bit. I want a yeah. nice car, but the car with the crack dash is going to make it like affordable for me. <laughs> so, yeah, right. um, I, I, so deck, crash, Crack dashes have always been like part of the uh, oh well they all crack kind of thing. Right. Uh, so I, I guess I'm not I'm not that that crazy about crack dashes, but I understand it in the used market that 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 is a big thing and that that uh, so a car with a crack dash gets a lot less money. Well, yeah, because the seats can be roached, but seats are easy to swap out. You know, they're, yeah. you could just unbolt them and put something else in dashboards are a nightmare For sure. <laughs> i mean oh my yeah. gosh well this one has uh, two and a half hours to go uh where is this car let's see here this one is in Layton, utah so that's a great road trip uh fly out to yeah. utah grab this car uh if you've got some money sitting at two and a half hours this car is sitting uh i don't know how many bids but it's at thirty thousand dollars 250 uh so boy, that's a lot for one of these, or at least it would have been before in pre bonkers time. Um, where do you think this is going to land? It's yeah, it's a lot for the miles, but it looks yeah. like a really nice example from the pictures. So, eight bits uh, so far, by the way, eight bits. So, okay. Uh, okay. It's not, not a lot, not, not yeah. a lot. Right. I, uh, these have been doing really well lately though. So like 30,000 is like pretty standard issue for an yeah. E 28. Uh, it looks uh, like a nice car. It obviously has some time left. I'm going to go 35. You're going to go 35. I think that's a great number. Uh, I'm going to go, oh boy, that is, dang, that's a good number because now I got to go just slightly over, just slightly under. Yeah. Uh, I'll go 36. I'm going to go, the, the The seller does say that the AC works. So your Ooh. road trip uh, thing makes all the sense. Uh, so I'm going to put you down for 35,000 and I'm going to go, what did right. I say, 36? 36. Uh, 36. Oh, he doesn't God. say it needs a recharge. <laughs> I, oh, God. Don't that annoys that. me so much. Oh, so my God. God. Like, That's such oh a great God. take, Lane. Uh, 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 yeah, or I hate the, the – even worse, it's like uh, the clutch is operating great right now. It's yeah. like uh, – yeah, yeah, especially yeah. on, like, hydraulic clutches. Well, of course it does. <laughs> uh, I will yeah. just reach to the internet and just, you know, smack him in the face. Yeah, all right. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, talk about a car that um, – Boy, these, I mean, come on, Fast and the Furious, Ferrari, can't afford it, pal. What do you think of a 355 GTS with a gated transmission in this uh, Giorgio Gray or something like that? Ermagerd, I'm going to go a little uh, drooly on this car. I have to admit, I love these. What's your take? I mean, this is a great red yeah. car, right? They're rad. They're super rad. I, dude, I haven't been able to drive one yet. I have a friend that has one. I keep missing it basically i need to go drive his car uh i know art has borrowed it a couple times and he loves them uh these are so cool they're just like hindered by the maintenance obviously yeah. that's a big issue with these things uh but i know prices have been going crazy and i know now they're 120 30 000 cars or 
Uh, yeah, especially with yeah. gated transmissions. Uh, all the yeah. sticky bits have been replaced on this. If you don't know what that all means, right. uh, look sticky it up. No more. Internet. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it did have an engine out service very recently, and uh, yeah, this car by all accounts seems like it's ready to go. True mileage unknown. Um, I think Ooh. it has like thirty-five thousand miles or something, uh, and it appears that the records support all that. But that is something that's uh, that's going to be out there. I don't think people care about that stuff. It used to be Ferrari owners were like, hey, if it's got this, now it's like whatever. There's a whole new set of buyers that are really romantic about these cars i have driven the daylights out of one of these it's not a car you want to drive slow uh it sounds like it's going to just shake itself apart the engine just sounds like gravel uh in a blender it, but as soon as you get up to like 5,000 rpms it's the greatest noise on the planet yeah um but yeah maintenance terrifying uh where do you think uh this car is gonna land and well, let me tell hey, me yeah, where it's at first miles. Yeah, it's currently with an hour to go. It's at one hundred eight thousand five hundred dollars uh, with twenty four bids. So this has got some action. Uh, is this gonna have a late stage rally? And if so, where do you think it will land? Lane, non red Ferrari with a gated manual, three fifty five. It's kind of. Yeah. I'm gonna say one thirty. One thirty is a good number. I'm gonna go one forty. Um, because I think uh, the gated stuff is just, and it's a, it, I, I think if it were a spider, I think it'd be yeah. 130. Um, but uh, given that it's a GTS, that's kind of like the best of both worlds. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's going to go for a little bit more than that. Uh, we yeah. shall see. Uh, this last car, can you even call this a car? This is for the adventure. Somebody wants to get out on the open road and spend time on the side of the road. Here is your 1983 Volkswagen Adventure Wagon. Uh, this is not a Westphalia. This is this has an aftermarket extendo wow. top. It's like this big fiberglass thing that's all the weight on top of <laughs> on a high-centered car anyway. Um, this is a really cool camper rig that you're not going to get anywhere in a hurry, but they do say that uh, getting there is better than the destination. So you will be spending a lot of time getting there. Uh, what do you think of one of these <laughs> Lane Skelton? Uh, that's an air, that's an air cooled car too. So that's uh, like, uh, it is, that's but this one, this one so. had a water pumper put in as the one, nine, oh, as a one okay. nine in it. Yeah. Oh, well uh, that's better then. Yeah. Okay. So it'll have a little bit of poop, but not much. It's got uh, a propane um, stove and all that kind of fun stuff i think yeah. it even comes with some chairs or something i don't know how does the do you I mean you looked at the how's the condition of like the paint job it looks stuff? pretty good i mean okay. i don't think that's a factory i think uh i think that paint job, not factory, yeah. yeah i think that's what they did at the wherever oh, they yeah. did the conversion they did the two-tone so you can see some okay. on it, it looks like, but that that looks kind of like it's been like that for a while so it's yeah not some yeah yeah huh Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, overall, it, d it doesn't appear to have any rust. Uh, the body yeah. is actually in really nice shape. Uh, the interior, all the stuff inside, if I get to those pictures, all the like the, the refrigerators and the stove and the sink, all that stuff works uh, yeah. and appears to be in pretty nice shape with the cute curtains and everything and huh. the cushions aren't all roached out. This seems like a place that you would actually want to spend some camping time in. Some of these you yeah. see them and you're like, oh, man, that smells like some old hippie and you don't want to spend yeah, yeah. time in there. Uh, a lot of DNA yeah. in the in the material. But this one looks like it's clean uh, and would just be terribly, terribly fun. I mean, look, okay, yeah. Little, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever yeah, owned? Have you ever owned a Vanagon? No, Our, Warren has one. Yeah, but uh, yeah, never owned a Vanagon. Have you ever driven lot. one? Any any distance? I, I've driven one, and I've been on road trips in them, and they're okay. a blast. For, yeah, right. You know, and they're kind of fun to drive too. Like yeah. they are kind of fun. You're sitting right over the front axle. Um, yeah. yeah, they actually like turn pretty well and everything for what they are. It almost, so, I mean, of course it's not a 911, but it's like the yeah. driving characteristics. You go into a corner, you're like, yeah, that engine's way back there. Yeah. All the same mm -hmm. principles are there. You're like, this is the worst 911 I've ever driven. Um, yeah. And uh, what is what does Bradley say? His 912 is like one of these shrunk in the dryer around his yeah, exactly. uh, little, uh, you know, type four engine. Um, all yeah, right. So yeah. where do we think this thing is going to land? It's Man. got... Uh, boy, it's got three and a half hours. It's got twelve thousand dollars right now, which I frankly oh. think is really low. Um, yeah. This might have a late stage rally. How many bids do we have? It looks like twenty one bids. So there's a lot of action. That's good. Uh, that's yeah. That, that people are looking at this thing, and it's in San Diego, so a great place to go. You could fly out, get in this thing, camp on the beach, and then drive it home to wherever the whatever yeah. boring city you're from. Um, where do you think it's gonna land, buddy? Yeah, I'm gonna go. I, I don't know what that aftermarket top does for values, but 
so I don't know, but it looks like a pretty good, uh, yeah, just San, Di- San Diego Beach uh, cruiser. Um, we're going to go 16. You're going to go 16? Yeah, I think that's a pretty good number. Uh, I think if it were an actual Westphalia, I think it's going to be well over 20. Uh, so yeah. I'm going to go a little higher, and I'm going to say 19 uh, and say I don't think it breaks – the 20 mark just because of that weird top uh what did you say or you... i said 16 oh, okay. i just don't know it's a air it's like the whole you know it's not it's an early one and then it has the weird top and then it has some obviously some blemishes and stuff uh, and non-factory yeah. color and da, 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 but da, 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 da. uh i'm with you i think that's that's solid reasoning uh and we shall see where that goes i mean rv anything rv ish has been really strong lately uh but I, I wonder if now that people can actually travel on airplanes and stuff like that and and i wonder if rvs will start to flatten out or you know camper rigs uh this summer, yeah. or if it will just continue to go even more bonkers who knows uh yeah. all right we shall see lane skelton thanks for being uh michael d for yeah. me today really appreciate yeah, that you're gonna come back later thanks this week and help me out again because he's on i would love to until friday Friday, I think so. Yeah. yeah um, any, any day is fine for me. All right. Let's talk offline and make that happen. Uh, thank okay. you guys for watching bid nerds. Make sure uh, go ahead, Lane, plug all the things real quick. Dude, wait, I heard Porsche road trip is live. Porsche road trip is live. That is true. You can go and yeah. binge watch the whole first season on Pluto TV in the cars section, or you can catch us when it's broadcast on chassis TV. I don't know what our time slot is. We, we, uh, uh our broadcast premiere was, uh, over the weekend and, uh, they have not told us when we're actually on normally. Uh, so for right now, you can just go binge watch all of it and see my friend Lane Skelton in the Bay area Bay ish episode. It's called, yeah. uh, so make sure you check out him and his, coverage of uh the coastal range rally and all the cool stuff that they do and then listen to uh the dwa podcast when's the next yeah. episode dwa podcast uh drops every what is it thursday uh so you can listen to a new episode every week and then we have uh radwood coming up in norcal in san mateo on july 10th uh and then check out radforsale.com for some 80s cars we're starting to get a little more cars we have a cool MR2 on there right now. Um, we have a oh, 944 Turbo coming this week. You had that, you had that blue week. MR2 uh, like last week. That we was... had a we had an AW11, but now we have a newer, like a fully modified, mm. crazy 400 and something horsepower MR2. And then we have a uh, 83 GTI coming later this week. We have a 944 Turbo, so we have some stuff coming. So check nice. it out. Uh, I have a 1999 Mercedes E430 Sports right on the bubble. Yeah. I want to sell it. Nice. Rad for sale? Yeah, yeah, for Is sure. it on the bubble? I mean, it was... It's I a mean, 99, was a 90, you said? Yeah, so uh, that yeah. was design that came out in what, 96? W210? Yeah. W210, yeah. Does that, yeah, does that yeah, fit the sure. criteria? Or yeah, it fits uh, it. not cool enough? All right. No, it fits it for sure. All right, let's do it. Let's talk about that yeah. offline too. We'll get that card. Cool. Here. Uh, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, like, notifications. Uh, all the uh, links to the cars that we talked about today are in the description below, uh, as well as, well, we don't put our bids on there. You're going to have to watch the show to see our bids. Let's see your bids. Can you guys beat the nerds? We shall see in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. We do this every day at the 9 o'clock hour Pacific time. So join us for Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. Thanks again, Lane. Skelton, we really appreciate you being here, buddy. Yeah, thank you.